Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The objective of this sequence is that the student will be able to locate all of the canals in any tooth he's assigned in the endodontic clinic. It seems obvious that if you don't locate the canals, you won't be able to clean them and fill them, and the tooth that you're treating is uh, guaranteed to be a failure. Uh, the instruments that we use in this procedure are simply a sterile, sterile clean mouth mirror and a sterile endodontic explorer. But there are also four requirements that you need to uh, have completed or you won't be successful in locating all the canals. Uh, when students have trouble locating the canals, it's usually one of these four requirements that they've skimped on. The first is that they should have a well-designed and prepared access preparation, especially the fact that the floor of the pulp chamber should remain intact to guide you to the orifices of the canals. Secondly, the pulp chamber should be meticulously clean of all debris. Thirdly, you should have knowledge of the normal pulpal anatomy and where the orifices of the canals are expected to be located. And four, you should look for the maximum number of canals in each tooth. If you're having problems locating canals, make sure that you've fulfilled all of these four requirements and then look carefully. If you can't find it then, you probably best call over an instructor and check out your findings with him. Now I want to go through and show you where and how to look for the canals in the various different teeth. Maxillary anterior teeth usually pose no problems to students since that there's gen generally one canal coming straight off of the pulp chamber. So once you get your access to the pulp chamber, you're into the canal. Mandibular anterior and bicuspid teeth are similar in that they usually have one canal leading directly off of the pulp chamber. However, both mandibular and bicuspid, mandibular anterior and bicuspid teeth have a tendency to have two canals, and you have to check each tooth to make sure that it does have only one canal. You do this by coming in at different angles and looking for a second canal. Come in heading towards the labial and have it geared right down into the pulp canal, coming, come in from the lingual and go right on down. Feel for two canals and only accept that you have one when you're sure that you can't feel a second. As you can see in the cross-section diagram, you can come in through the access preparation from the lingual heading towards the buckle. Go all the way down and the wall will guide you into a canal. If you have a second canal, when you lift the file up or the explorer and then go in in the other direction, you'll be able to feel a little click and the file will be going in a different direction as you slide over into the second canal. So always check mandibular, anterior, and bicuspid teeth for two canals. The maxillary bicuspids, once again, are usually no problem to students. Well, the first bicuspid usually has two canals. The second bicuspid maxillary usually has one canal, but either one could be reversed. You have to check both teeth for two canals. You do that by, once again, coming in from the buckle and looking for a canal going off to the lingual, then coming up, changing the direction of your explorer, coming down, and feeling for a canal on the buckle. A cross-sectional diagram of a maxillary bicuspid shows that if you come in from the buckle, you'll be able to go have direct access right into the lingual canal. Pulling up slightly and changing the direction of the file, you'll be able to get into the buckle canal coming in from the lingual. You check maxillary first and second bicuspids this way to make sure that they have one or two canals. The maxillary molars present a little bit more problem for students. You have to, you're farther back in the mouth and you have to get oriented to find three, sometimes four canals. This is an occlusal view of a maxillary molar 
with an endodontic access preparation that has been prepared. As you can see, there are three and then sometimes a fourth canal. The first canal is the mesial buccal canal. It sits almost directly underneath the mesial buccal cusp, very much to the buccal and somewhat to the mesial. The second canal is the mesial, the distal buccal canal. Uh, students often have problems finding that because they look for it over here underneath the distal buccal cusp. In actuality, it's very close to the mesial buccal canal, and it's always lingual to the mesial buccal canal, coming off in this direction. There is a big lingual canal, a lingual, uh, mesial lingual canal that sits underneath the big mesial lingual cusp. It's almost directly lingual from the distal buccal canal. There is sometimes a fourth canal on this tooth. It's considered kind of a second uh, mesial buccal canal. It sits one or two millimeters lingual to the mesial buccal canal on a line drawn from the mesial buccal to the lingual canal. So you always want to check maxillary molars, especially maxillary first molars, for this fourth canal. Here's a maxillary molar that's been sectioned at the level of the floor of the pulp chamber. As you can see, if you leave the floor of the pulp chamber intact during your access preparation, it will guide you right into the canals. Comparing this uh, section with the uh, graphic that you've just seen, you can see that the mesial buccal cus uh, canal sits right up here towards the buccal, right underneath the mesial buccal cusp. The distal buccal canal is not so far to the distal, and it's not underneath the distal buccal cusp, but sits fairly close to the mesial buccal canal and always lingual to it. The big lingual canal is right underneath the mesial lingual cusp and pretty far towards the lingual. And in this tooth, we have a fourth canal a second mesial buccal canal right here. You always want to check and make sure that you don't have one of these, or if you do, you want to find it. So you have the four canals, as you can see in the graphic. Locating the orifice of the canals is only half the battle. You have to get the files into the canals. To do this, your file has to have the proper direction and angulation. To get into the mesial buccal canal, you come from the distal lingual down into the canal and letting the wall of your preparation and your untouched pulp chamber floor guide you right into the orifice and into the canal. To, come from, to get into the distal buccal, you come from the mesial, I mean, the mesial lingual and you get right into the distal buccal canal. And to get into the big lingual canal, you come from the buccal and you'll slide right into the lingual canal. A cross-section graphic shows you what's going on when we do this. You come in from the distal lingual and you'll go right into the mesial buccal canal. You come in from the mesial lingual and you'll get into the distal buccal canal. And if you come in from the buccal, you go right down into the lingual canal. The mandibular molar poses uh, similar problems to those of the maxillary uh, molar. It's far back in the mouth and you have to get oriented to find three, sometimes four canals. Looking at this graphic of a mandibular molar with uh, endodontic access preparation, you can see that you have a mesial buccal canal located toward the buccal right underneath the mesial buccal cusp. The distal, I mean the mesial lingual canal is not that far to the lingual. Most people look for it way out underneath the mesial lingual cusp, but it's actually almost in the center of the tooth. And then you have almost directly distal to the mesial lingual is the big distal canal. Now that canal sometimes has two canals instead of one. So you have to check that canal 
uh, probing it in different directions to look for two small canals on the distal instead of one big canal. Here's a mandibular molar that's been sectioned at the floor of the pulp chamber. You can see that the floor of the pulp chamber guides you right into the canals if it's left untouched during your access preparation. Comparing it with the um, graphic that we saw before, you can see that you have the mesial buccal canal very far up to the mesial, the mesial lingual canal not quite as far to the, the lingual as you might expect, but almost directly mesial from a big distal canal. Now in this case, the distal canal actually has two separate canals, which we can find by probing in one direction and taking the probe out and coming out and probing in another direction. You make sure in mandibular molars that you check the distal canal to make sure that it's a single canal instead of two smaller canals. When you find the orifice to the canal, then you have to have the proper angulation to get your file into the canal. To get into the mesial buccal canal, you come from the distal lingual and it slides right on in. To get into the distal, I mean the, the mesial lingual, you come from the distal buccal and you'll get right on into your canal. And to get into the distal canal or canals, you come in from the mesial. And if you're checking for two canals, which you should, you come from the mesial buccal and then the mesial lingual. Make sure that you have only one canal, or if you have two canals, that you'll find them. This graphic will show you what's going on inside the tooth. To get into that mesial buccal canal, you, come, you get your file over to the distal lingual, and it will go right on down into the canal. You can see that it would be hard to get in coming straight, straight down. You'd hit the floor of the pulp chamber. Coming into the distal, I mean the mesial lingual canal, you don't have to come all the way from the distal buccal because the canal is almost in the mesial of the tooth. You can come pretty much straight on down and you'll get right into that uh, me mesial lingual canal. To get into the uh, distal canal, you come in from the mesial and you'll slide right on down into that big canal and you want to make sure to check and for two canals in that distal. Now, once again, if you have any problems finding the canals that you're looking for, check your four requirements, making sure each one of them has been fulfilled, especially the last one. Always check for extra canals to make sure that you're not missing any. Once you're sure that you've done all that you can do, you want to check with an instructor to verify your results. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.